Hello Cornell students, staff, and families, and welcome to Dragon TV, a show written and produced by the students of Cornell Central High School's media journalism class. We are here to bring you the latest in community news, national and international happenings, public interest stories, and to bring you fresh and entertaining content. I'm Michael Lujan, and I want to thank you for joining us for today's episode. In this episode, we will discuss sporting event capacity and will stadiums be full soon, explore are you addicted to TikTok and how to make a sweet DIY keychain, we will learn about the new Polaroid printer with Tech Review with Thomas, and learn about making friends. It has been way too long since we've seen fans at full capacity, over a year. In this segment, Dragon TV reporter Matt Cavallo does some digging to find out if in fact fans will be able to attend sporting events by the end of this year. If you're anything like me, you hate this site. Cardboard cutouts of yourself is a site we've been seeing for way too long due to COVID-19. It's been a year since that date struck so many of us when COVID first hit, and people like me have not been able to see big games because of the shutdown. Now the big question remains, will we see fans at full capacity in 2021? Major League Sports have tried so hard all year to get fans into the stadium, starting at 0% capacity, bubble-like system with the NBA and the NHL, but eventually the MLB and the NFL allowed 25% and 30% fans for their World Series and Super Bowl. Texas Governor Greg Abbott, as well as the Mississippi Governor, opened their state's 100% ending the mask mandate. Opening states like Texas 100% really helps fans to be able to go at full capacity, including like the Cowboys and the Texans. Asking fellow classmates, friends, and family, I had around a 70% turnout of them believing that they will see fans at full capacity in 2021 due to states like Texas and Mississippi opening up 100%. Here are some contrasting statements my fellow classmates had to say. I do believe by the end of the year, fans will be able to return to these sporting events and watch their favorite team and cheer I them I do on. believe we'll be able to go back into stadiums by the end of the year. I think we should have enough health protocols. I do believe concerts are going to be in person 100% by the end of the year. Uh, I think we should have enough health protocols in place by then uh, for us to be able to do so. I think that sporting venues won't be at 100% capacity in 2021, maybe at like 70 or 80% capacity, but definitely not 100 by the end of 2021, probably by 2022. I really think that it's not going to be able to be safe with 100% capacity. Now I conclude with one last question. Do you believe that we will have fans at full capacity in 2021? I don't know about you, but I really miss watching live sports and hearing live music. This really makes me hopeful for the future and excited to do the things we love again. Have you recently found yourself on TikTok, scrolling and scrolling for hours on end almost every day? Don't worry, you're not alone. For this next segment, Caroline Valle finds out whether or not a few kids here at CCHS are addicted to the popular teen app TikTok. Are you addicted to TikTok? TikTok is an app that many teens use worldwide. It has various types of videos such as comedy, dancing, cooking, and much more. As you can see here, many teens' time spent on TikTok has increased during the COVID-19 lockdowns. So I went around and asked three people what their screen time looked like. My name is Kayla Hughes. I'm 17 and I'm a senior. My weekly screen time on TikTok is 12 hours and 55 minutes, and I'm not proud of it, but I love TikTok, so live, love TikTok. Hi, my name is Catherine Broncha. I'm 18, I'm a senior. Um, my screen time, my weekly average screen time on TikTok is eight hours and five minutes. Um, I probably am addicted. It's just so hard. Like you just you go to sit down and then you just pull up TikTok and you're just there for like an hour. Um, and I wish I did more productive things with my day. Um, and I wish I didn't download it, but then also I love it. So it's like really hard. So it's a love hate relationship. Thank you. Oh, didn't see you there. Perry Anderson, 17, senior. 
Um, my screen time for TikTok has been 11 hours and 12 minutes. I would say I'm pretty upset with this, but recently I've come in across a little bit of fame on this TikTok app, and I'm just giving pe the people what they want. No, what they need. <laughs> there are tons of activities one can do to get their mind off of TikTok, such as going for a drive, reading a good book, taking up a new sport, or even trying to learn a new recipe. TikTok is a great app to spend time on as long as you know your limits and won't let it distract you from all the other things in life. Now that we're approaching spring, all you can do is hope everyone gets inspired to finally put their phones down and enjoy the upcoming warm weather. Have you ever wanted to make your own personalized jewelry, keychains, or pins? In this segment, Dragon TV's DIY expert, Caitlin Dugan, will walk you through how to make these items using shrinkable plastic. Have you ever wanted to make your own jewelry or pins but didn't know how to? In this segment, I'll teach you how to reuse plastic to make some simple crafts. Gather your materials. You'll need colorful permanent markers, craft paint or colored pencils, shrinkable plastic or number six plastic, scissors, your design of choice on paper, a baking sheet with parchment paper, hot glue, and whatever you want to hang your plastics with, like keychains, pin backs, or earring hangers. Your materials depend on the way you want to use the end product. Now let's get into it. First, either draw or print out your design and place it under the sheet of plastic. It should be around three times the size of what you want the pin to end up being. Preheat your oven to 350 degrees. Then, outline and fill in the design onto the plastic. You can tape it to the paper to ensure it doesn't move. Make sure you draw as detailed as possible. After drawing onto your plastic, cut out the design and add a hole if you would like to hang the end product. Place plastics on a baking sheet and parchment paper. Bake for around 30 seconds or until the plastics shrivel up. Take them out and be careful not to burn yourself. They should settle on their own, but use a spatula or flat object to completely flatten them. Let cool. Lastly, use acrylic paint on the back of the plastic to further brighten your colors. Let dry and apply pin backs or hangers. This should be the final outcome. Be creative and make whatever designs you want. Have fun with it, and thanks for watching. Those keychains are awesome. I definitely want to make one. Caitlin, thanks for teaching us how. Are you a fan of Polaroids? Do you like the idea of instant gratification of being able to have your own photos printed on the spot? Well, you're in luck. In this segment, Dragon TV reporter Thomas Boyce checks out the new Polaroid Lab. Let's take a look and see how it compares to the original. What's up, everybody? Welcome to a brand new segment, Tech Review with Thomas. Now, let me ask you this. Do you feel you never do anything with your photos? Do you want to free them through your phone? Well, you should check out the Polaroid Lab. It's a creative way of bringing your photos from your phone into the real world. In the past, Polaroid began transferring Polaroid technology to create unique prints. Then, in 1948, the Polaroid Land Model 95 was invented. This creation would become a huge landmark as it would provide the consumers with the technology needed to create the image. It had two sets of positive and negative rolls, which allowed the camera to be developed inside the camera. Polaroid continued to improve their cameras in the following decades. However, in recent times, digital photography has become the norm, and Polaroid fell out of favor due to changing consumer tastes. Polaroid is back with a twist on their old photography system, but it relies on digital photos taken on your smartphone. So let's see how the new Polaroid lab works, and let's try it out for ourselves. First, download the Polaroid app. Make sure the lab is on, the cover is off, and you have already inserted the film. Then select the photo you want to use from the Polaroid app, making any desired adjustments to the exposure and color. Finally, place your phone on top of the lab, wait until the lab makes a success sound, then hit the red button. Make sure you shield it from light and wait 10 to 15 minutes. So let's check out how some of my Polaroids turned out. As you can see, I've got some good and bad results. Some of my photos needed the exposure to be adjusted. I also had a few with color accuracy issues. Here is a side-by-side -side of the original 
and the final product. Overall, I like the style and effects of my Polaroids. I would totally recommend buying yourself a Polaroid Lab. Thanks to this new product, everyone can now enjoy Polaroids. Now, that's all the time we have with the Tech Review of Thomas. See you next time! Wow, the Polaroid Lab is awesome. I can't wait to try one out myself. Creating friendships isn't always a simple thing to do. In this segment, Jaden Vega explains the importance of friendship and shows off some tips to meet new people and hopefully make new friends. Friendship is honestly one of the most beautiful things on this planet. Britannica defines it as a state of enduring affection, esteem, intimacy, and trust between two people. But I would describe it as something that gives me purpose and has helped me through some of the toughest times of my life. I've been fortunate enough to have made some great friendships during my lifetime, but some people aren't as fortunate as I have been. So in this video, albeit very simply, I'm going to show some ways on how you can start new conversations and hopefully open the pathway for new friendships to blossom. Okay, besides showing my amazing dancing skills, this video showcases two of my best friends, Mike and Jake. I ended up meeting Mike and Jake by using something that I like to call the mutuals method. So let's just say that this is Chris, this is Tom, and this is Dave. While Chris and Tom are complete strangers, Chris is friends with Dave, and Dave happens to be friends with Tom. Let's say for example, Dave decides to have them both over. Unbeknownst to Chris and Tom, they already have a similarity. They're both friends with Dave. With this similarity, and Dave being there to serve as a common comfort, these two individuals are more likely to bond than two complete strangers. I have found this method to be one of the most simple ways to meet new people and one of the most effective. This is actually the way that I've met basically all of my friends. But let's assume that you want to become friends with someone completely new. How would you go about that? Try to find some common ground, like a video game. Hey, what game are you playing? Uh, just playing Among Us. Oh, cool. You ever heard of Apex? Apex? Why would I play that game? You can't even see your character. If it doesn't click on the first try, don't sweat it. Not everyone is too friendly and some people have bad days. A simple compliment can go a long way. Hey dude, I really like your flannel. Thanks man, I got it at the thrift store. Wait, you like thrifting? So do I. And there you have it. With a few words, a new friendship blossoms. Now I've given you the water. It's time for you to plant the seeds for your new friendship to grow. Those are some pretty decent tips. I'll be sure to remember some of these next time I meet someone new. That's it for today. Thanks for joining us and we hope you tune in next time for another episode of Dragon TV.